Hi peeps, Ingrid Marsh here from Soulful Living with Ingrid, my darling, and this is the Getting Your Groove Back show. And as you know, I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission to spread a new vibration, a new vibration of love, a new vibration of light, and a new vibration of happiness, my darlings, into every corner of the world, and to help you have an everyday love affair with life. Um, anyway, my lovely, helping me um, today, um, just to on my mission, I had the wonderful Hasina Raman. Um, Hasina is a martial arts expert. She runs the only female only uh, martial arts studio in Luton. Um, she has three back belts under under her belt, <laughs> rather. But it's where it came from. Um, Hasina went through the most horrific bullying when she was younger. It was so horrific that when we had our pre-interview chat, she actually had me crying. It was so bad. And this is an area, as you know through close to my, my heart, especially after going through adult bullying. She certainly turned it around. This, my darling, is an interview really worth stay listening for. So stay with us. my lovely how are you my darling hi i'm good how are you i'm very very well my darling thank you so much for joining me my lovely so mm -hmm. i'm not sure if i d described you as well as i could have done do you want to tell us what you do yeah so um i have the only female martial arts club here in luton called pink diamond of martial arts and it's for g girls and women and i teach uh, muay thai mma and self-defense and it's a place where it's a female in female only environment a place of empowerment and just to build up confidence for women. Fabulous. Okay, so before we talk a little bit more about that, if it's okay with you, I'd like us to go back um, to younger days. And I know you've written a book, you've not mentioned that yourself, actually you've written a book around bullying. Mm -hmm. I forgot to mention that, and that book- Oh yeah, I know, yeah, I need to mention that. <laughs> <laughs> the book is called um, Heroes, A Guide to Anti-Bullying. And uh, just to say, when we both spoke about this, we have a pre-interview chat, we both cried, it was just so, moving because it's emotional it, yes it's really emotional because body doesn't happen i know for you it happened in childhood but it also happens in adulthood which was my experience a bit mm -hmm. but um let's go back to those days hasina and tell us exactly what happened um so i went to a school um that was 90 percent i'd say 90 percent white school um so i was the only brown child in my class so I think um, it was kind of a shock to the kids because maybe they haven't seen, like, I, I, I know in the camera I look very white, but I am brown. <laughs> it's, the, it's the light that makes me look lighter. But yeah, so I was um, bullied quite badly at school. Um, it started when I was about 11 years old and it lasted for about three, three years. And it's only recently, probably in the past two or three years that I have gathered the confidence or the, or the, you know, got rid of the fear to actually talk about it. And it's something that I kind of hid in a box and chucked away. It's, some, it's someone that I didn't want to remember because I was so ashamed of her for not standing up to, for herself, for not speaking up and just dealing with it. You know, sometimes people say, just ignore it. And that was in my head, just ignore it. So when they used to call me names, just ignore it. When they used to push me down the corridor, just ignore it. It was just trying to be invisible so they wouldn't notice me to bully me. And that's how I kind of dealt with it which it is wrong because later on in life, it's going to affect you and it's going to come hard at you that you're not going to like yourself. You're going to deal with so many other emotional problems that comes attached with that. And you said that you felt um, ashamed to even talk about it. So you still took it on yourself as if it was yeah. your issue, it was your problem. And, and why was yeah. that? I, you know, I, I get what was happening while it was happening, but even when it was yeah. over, you still felt that this was my issue. This is my part. I don't yeah. want to that. It's like why when they called me the N-word or when they used to pass notes around in the class, why didn't I have the confidence to say, don't do that? It's, it's nasty. Why are you doing that? Or say something when they called me the N-word. Or usually sometimes it'd be at lunch break where, you know, the you're lining up to go to lunch and that's their time. Like the boys and the girls, it was mainly the boys actually at that age, at 11 years old. I think boys can be quite mean at 11. Um, they would call me brown chocolate, anything they can think of that is brown. 
So it was just like words after words. And it was, it was something like I would pretend I'm in a little box. So I'd ignore it and pretend that I couldn't hear it. And I didn't want, I, sh I should have stood up for myself. I should have said, or in a way now I think I should have just gone up and slapped them because it would have probably would have made a difference. But it was just the way that my 11 year old self, who was very shy anyway, dealt with it by not saying anything and pretending I, it didn't exist. I mean, I can say to you that even in adulthood, my darling, you know, um, yeah. I can look back and I can get, I get cross with myself and think, yeah. why don't I do that? Why don't I speak up? Why don't I say, and, and I know what you mean because you go, it's part of the healing process, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You get cross with yourself for not yeah. saying anything. Not being able to stand up for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, the mother's are a bit different in that. I didn't realise it was bullying. I didn't realise that. <laughs> it's another story for another day. I didn't realise it was bullying, as nuts as that sounds. Yeah. Um, I could always make excuses for them um, as to why yeah. they were doing it. And they didn't really mean, they didn't really mean any harm. Um, well, but yes, different in adulthood, isn't it? Then like, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, definitely get cross to myself. Um, you talked about yeah. the notes being passed around. What happened there? So it was usually in, in class. So we'd all be sat in tables and they would kind of move their chairs a bit because they didn't want to sit next to me because they thought they'd get brown on them <laughs> so it was really harsh like some of the things they used to think and they'd move their chairs away and then they'd write notes and they'd pass it to each other but it skipped me so I knew it was about me but the note wouldn't come to me so I'd reach out and grab the note and it would say I'm sat to her I'm sat next to her N but with me it's like why didn't I take that to the teacher why couldn't I do that now I think I'm like why why didn't I do anything about it so I would just take the note and just not say anything it's just how I dealt with it and that's one of the main reasons I've started a martial arts club because that's what helped me and I want to help kids that I say going through the same thing now because if I could go back to myself when I was 13 years old I'd say look stand up for yourself even if you get bullied which you're, you're getting bullied anyway so stand up for yourself so they know you've got the confidence to do that did you speak to your parents about it at all at the time I didn't speak to anyone no so that was another issue that I kind of dealt with it myself and I wish I did speak to my parents because maybe they would have moved me, moved me to a different school but it was just something that I would go home and just cry about and then deal with it that way so you said you moved into um martial arts as a way of um empowering yourself but how did that come about did you consciously think I want to do martial martial arts did that just pop up in a dream one day how did that come about I think like once I once I got to the age of 15 I think it was a teacher's notice that I was so quiet and I was so withdrawn from everything I wouldn't concentrate in class while my um, studies suffered a lot as well I suffered from ADHD when I was younger as well so it was just like everything everything mixed into one just made me not want to do anything, not to socialise, not to speak, not to concentrate on my work. And in the 90s, nobody knew what ADHD was. They just put you in a special learning class. They wouldn't, they'd see you as someone who's not willing to learn. Nowadays, there's a lot that they can do for a child, but in them days, it was nothing. So they, you know, my report on my, when I was 15, 16, they wrote, Hasina, you need to come out of your shell. You need to find out who you are. And it was one of my teachers that wrote that. And I thought, that is, that is what I need to do. I need to, I've lost myself. I don't even like who I am. I, I don't even know who I am. So I need to find who I am. And I've always been into fitness. I've always loved fitness. I've always been very blessed to be quite fit. So it was something that I've always wanted to do. So one of my friends said, there's a karate class that's starting just, um, just recently just started. Should we go and see what it's like? So I went with her and then that was it. I just loved it. I fell in love with it. So I started my first karate lesson when I was 16 and I just fell in love with karate and then I carried on with my martial arts for many many years and was there in that karate club was there only one that looked like you do no I'm still the only one but it was just it was just like they didn't see me as someone different they just saw me as someone who's come there to learn karate um even though I was 16 I was still one of the older ones I wasn't one of the young because there's seven eight year olds there it was all a mixed class, but I was one of the older ones. And the instructor was very, very nice, always very helpful towards me. Um, so, yeah, so it made me feel like I was part of something. And did you wear a hijab then? No, no. I only started wearing hijab probably about nine years. Yeah. OK, a few years ago. But so you went to this place that you're still yeah. one of the only um, brown people or the only brown person 
I see now. Yeah, your video has yeah, oh, there, we go. there we go, back again. Um, back again. No, that's okay. I was asking, were you the only um, brown person at, at the club, or were there one of the one of the few? No, I was I was always the only brown person. Yeah, the only brown person there. Okay, but what was yeah. beautiful because it was your voice and where you were supposed to be. Like I said, nobody mm -hmm. saw that. It was just not you about thought, that. Yeah, yeah. and you yeah, felt at home. Really Sorry, Hasina, go ahead. Yeah, so it's very, it's very, like even though nobody looked like me. Nobody judged me for being any different. That's how I felt when I started martial arts. And I think that's the beauty of martial arts is that it teaches you to, to that martial arts is an art that you learn. There's no race or religion that comes into it. You're all there for one reason only, to learn the skill. And, you know, there's a common denominator there, actually, that when people find their voice or find mm -hmm. that um, thing that's in, line, in alignment with their soul, that whatever the outside world would give you hell about, it doesn't matter in that world. <laughs> you know, it... It, yeah. it doesn't exist but you know for the for the and I'm glad you've told that share this story and I'm glad you're um you do what you do because there'll be so many people who look like you Hasina um who look mm. like me um mm. you know probably you know more except because I don't wear hijab or what have you mm. but we don't look like the stereotype and yeah. there's so many people who are kept away and people know that it's to be in my bonnet <laughs> There's so many people who are kept away from their sole purpose, who are kept away from their voice because the stereotype associated with that, it doesn't look like they do. So your, yeah. all what you stand for is far more powerful, I think. And that's one of the reasons what attracted me to you <laughs> was because um, <laughs> I just thought now, here we go. There's this lady doing this amazing um, martial arts move with a hijab. I thought, what a badass. I love her. <laughs> I want to interview yeah. her. <laughs> so um, I just want to show a video very quickly of Hasina in action. Is that okay? Of course it is, yes. Life can be so hard So many days Only months apart Got summer ways And winter hearts Yeah we fall but we spring Right up I was lost So long till I found the How the path I Walk is from above Cause all we need Is his love And now I know the darkest moments you see, you're absolutely you amazing and when you sent me that oh. video honestly once again you know my heart just kind of like jumped into my I just thought gosh she's so incredible no, <laughs> you, thank you so much you really are um so yeah so tell me a bit more about your club tell me about um you know what happens when people come along and they're in their bud form those children themselves who may have been bullied who you know, mm. in the outside world, and you know, just didn't feel okay with themselves. What kind of, what's mm. the typical um, transition for them? What does that look like? Um, so, Ping Diamond Martial Arts started around five years ago. Um, I do a ladies only MMA class and it's for women of all race, all religion. Anybody's welcome to come. What, so, um, what's, what's, what's MMA? Um, oh, sorry. So, mixed martial arts. Right. And what, what's that? So, mixed martial arts is you do a bit of like, you know, kickboxing is a bit of like that as well as wrestling, as well as grappling. So we, we do a lot of groundwork where <clears throat> someone comes and attacks you and say you're on the floor, so you how to fight someone when someone's on top of you. So it's, it's all like self-defense with wrestling, with grappling, with um, kickboxing, everything mixed together. So right. it was something very new in Luton. Um, not many women knew anything about it. So <clears throat> when I started it five years ago, it was an amazing buzz. There was Muslim women who wear the full niqab, they were coming, there were non-Muslim women. It was just so nice because when everyone got together, nobody cares who anyone else is. They're, on, they're only there. It could be there because they need that time away from their kids. It could be that they're being attacked and they need to learn self-defense or it could be just their me time. So it was nice for everyone to get together and just practice something that they have a passion for. And that was the ladies only class. And the kids class, I had a lot of parents who messaged me for like say eight, nine year old girls who are getting quite badly bullied. It makes me very upset when I read the emails. And they're like, they just need that confidence. Um, some of the stories are, it just reminds me of how shy I was when I was that age and how hard it is to deal with bullying when you're a shy child anyway. Um, so 
they come to my class and then the first few weeks they'll be very closed and they'll be very shy and I'll have to push them a bit to join in. And then literally within three months, they're a different character. Like they'll come in, they'll smile, pad work, they'll, you know, they'll make friends. And it's just so nice to see that, that you can make a difference with martial arts and it doesn't matter if you wear the hijab or it doesn't matter who you are. You can still find the confidence. You just have to find it within yourself. And that's the thing, isn't it? It's that soul connection, which supersedes yeah. all the outside things. When Definitely, people disconnect yeah. on that, yeah. what I say, a spiritual level, none of yeah. that matters, you know, because we're almost yeah. embracing everybody. It's that difference, I think. For me, I think yeah. it's all that difference that comes together as one that creates the yeah. most beautiful whole. This is mm. so amazing. So you've got three black belts um, <laughs> under your belt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's a better way of saying that. And um, so how did they come about? Um, um, so karate, I did that when I was from the age of 15 to 16. Um, from, from the age of 15, I think it was until I was about 19. So I did it for about five, yeah, four or five years. And I got my black belt. Then I did a lot of competitions and I needed something else that kind of was a bit more intense. So I went into kickboxing. So I got my second degree back, black belt in karate. Then I went to kickboxing. I did that for three years. And I got my black belt in kickboxing and I did Muay Thai and then I got my black belt in Muay Thai. So it was just one after I, I was never satisfied with one style. So I just wanted to try out different styles. And then I did capoeira, um, I did MMA. So it was just a bit of everything for the past 20 years of my life. <laughs> <laughs> and you look so young. <laughs> like, oh, you, thank you. <laughs> you said to me, I know, you know, the children. I was thinking, oh, does she do babysitting as well or something like that? It's like, <laughs> Children, you're no, like, the last 10 years of my life, you look absolutely amazing. Um, oh, <laughs> um, so the other thing I wanted to kind of um, go through with you is that one of the things I want to really encourage in getting people to, you know, to live a passionate life, to live a life that, you know, they want to have a love affair with, I, I call it. Mm. And I feel in order to do that, your body needs to be connected to your mind. It needs to be one thing. I believe we're living in a world at the moment where we, they chop women up, <laughs> you know, like that's your body and that's your mind and that's yeah. something else. And it's Very true. Yeah, we'll, we'll never feel whole. We'll never be able to, you know, truly feel um, inside mm. unless we can, you know, connect it all together. And I, you know, whilst researching for doing the show, they, they talked about actually that martial arts being a way of connecting mm. mind, body and spirit. Would you agree? And if so, how would you explain that? Um, I think like, like as I was studying martial arts, I didn't really wear the hijab before. I wasn't really a practicing Muslim. Um, I knew what my mum and dad taught me, but I wasn't practicing um, at all, to be honest. And then the more I studied, the more I did martial arts, the more I found myself. And the more I wanted to look into uh, my religion myself. And once I started looking into my religion, I started reading books. I started um, learning, not because sometimes the media portrays religion in a different way. So like a lot of my friends knew me as Muslim, but they wouldn't say I was a Muslim. They'd be like, oh, she's not a practicing Muslim. And even though I wanted to like, it's so weird because I wanted to be like them, but I knew I wasn't like them. So I needed to another step for me would be to find out more about my religion and that's what I did um the more I found out the more I had that connection like I felt that spiritual connection I wanted to take that that other, another step to get married to find a good Muslim man to get married to and start wearing the hijab and just really try and connect with my inner self and when I did find religion it was just everything was pieced <coughs> together and I found that connection of mind body and spirit so I felt closer to God and I felt like this is what who I am. Would you say that you feel um, aligned, that everything feels as, as one? Yeah, I think, um, I, you know, like since I was younger, um, when I used to go through the bullying period and when I used to go through a, a time where I couldn't really f connect with myself or go through depression, I would write. So I, I've had a few problems poems published as well so I'm a published author from a very young age I had three or four um, books released when I was younger um, and it was my way of writing things down so I used to write a lot of poetry and with that there was a connection and in the if you ever look into the Quran it's all poetry so everything's written in poetry and that used to amaze me like everything's all your answers are there but you just have to translate it you have to understand it and that's part of religion 
part of who we are is all kind of connects because the more you find something out, the more you understand it. That's truly beautiful. It's truly beautiful. Yeah. You have to give me some links as well and I'll ins- insert them to the show notes where we can find more about your poetry and that kind of thing as well. I can ignore that. Yeah. Thing. Thank you. Um, okay, so what would be your three takeaways, my darling? If I ask for three takeaways for, you know, people who've gone through, um, you've lacked a bit of confidence, who've lost their way, you mm. know, who's thought about martial arts, not too sure about it, um, mm. or like I said, people have been bullied and just want that bit of confidence again. What would be your three takeaways? My first one would be to be yourself. Don't be afraid to be different. Don't be afraid to follow your passion and don't be afraid to stand out. So completely and truly try and be yourself um number two would be find um face your fears so if there is something so mine was public speaking i was so so afraid of public speaking um because of a traumatic event when i was 11 when i stood up and they were saying names at me and it was it's just i froze and i cried so it was something that was traumatically very bad for me and it's something that i always hated but recently in the past two years i've done 15 public speaking events it's one of my biggest fears that I faced and I got up there on stage and I spoke to in a lot of events. So that's one of my, the second one is to face your fears because it's not as bad as it looks <laughs> or it seems. Um, and my third one is um, be the queen of confidence, wear that crown and just be yourself, have confidence and yeah, live your life. You know, I, I'm obviously going to pick up on the public speaker one because that's my baby. And I'm so thrilled you say that. I'm almost going to need you back again. <laughs> to talk about that. Because it does drive me potty when people think, in the amount of emails I'd get for people saying, can't do public speaking. And it's like, I can't do it. And that word just drives me insane. It's like, you can't do it yet. And, um, yeah. and you've come from a really traumatic place with it, you know, um, mm-hmm. where you were like, bullied even even through that and you yeah. still come back do you know what I mean because it took me many years many many years but I got yeah there. but it, it can yeah. take that <laughs> you know what I, mean? I say to people I didn't come at my mother public speaking <laughs> do you know what yeah, I mean exactly. <laughs> I had to learn the craft I had to learn the art form you'll find if I was listening to um Kevin Hart's documentary the other day when he told people he wanted to be a comedian and they were like oh but you're not a Richard Pryor yeah. you're not a blah blah he said but no one talks about the steps leading there <laughs> Do you know what I mean? There were there were steps to get there, yeah. and that made so you there. You know, to get there. Yeah. You froze, your your video is frozen again. Say that one more time. Oh, no. Yes, what, what you said about Kevin Hart is like everyone sees him there, but they don't realize how many steps it took to get there. Yeah, and it could take years, but it's little by little, bit by bit, keep practicing, falling down, practicing, yeah. falling down. So, thank you so much, and absolutely to be different and to embrace your difference and to stand fast in that. And mm. like I said, you know, you, you don't have. I mean, for many years, I was very different to the community that I was in, and was stuck with them, <laughs> you know, kind mm. of thing, and getting this um, abuse. Um, as well but you know you can find your community like you did you found your community within the martial arts group you know there was no difference yeah. you know so it really is about as well finding your community finding your choir is what I often say my lovely yeah. you're doing online courses as well aren't you so which means much more people can join in is that right that's right yeah so because of the COVID situation um, all my classes are now online um, so I do, I teach uh, Muay Thai online and Pilates online. So it's two different things, but it's one to kind of get intensity and the other one to kind of stretch you and give you a bit of tone as well. So two Fabulous. different classes. Yeah. How do we get in touch with you? How do we book some of these amazing classes? Um, so I'm on um, Instagram, it's Pink Diamond Martial Arts. And I'm also on Facebook, um, Pink Diamond Martial Arts. So you Fabulous. can find me on Instagram and Facebook. On all Pink Diamond. Why Pink Diamond, by the way? Pink Diamond, I think my husband actually came up with the name. He was like, it's something that is rare, unique and priceless. And that's something that maybe he sees in me. So yeah. <laughs> right. he came up with the name. <laughs> rare, unique and priceless. I absolutely love it, my dad. Nice to be rare, unique and absolutely priceless. My dad, thank you so much for joining us. My no dad, problem. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure, Scrumptious. My darlings, that was the awesome um, Hasina Raman. Um, I love her story. I love her story, that growth, that transition, and to know that you can come from a really dark place, 
but to use that dark place to empower you. Maybe if Hussein hadn't gone through that, who's to say she would have found um, the martial arts? In fact, I saw a really great quote yesterday is that for every, for every flower to bloom, there's always a bit of poop. <laughs> you know, there's always a bit of definitely <laughs> <laughs> for that flower to bloom. And for me, I sometimes think I now thank those bunnies. I thank them because in the, the day they made me stronger, made me the woman I am today. So my darlings, for a replay of this, you can log to my website, thesoulbabe.com. Please get in touch with my beautiful Hasina. I love her dearly. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, she's just so <laughs> wonderful. No, I didn't cry this time. <laughs> I really didn't cry. <laughs> no, I held it in today. <laughs> exactly. And for more soft tips and inspiration, don't forget to log to my website, thesoulbabe.com. Ciao.